In mid-19th century Britain, large-scale industrial manufacturing was booming. Under these new conditions, designers, consumers and the government questioned what counted as good design. Majolica, named after the prized tin-glazed Majolica of the Italian Renaissance, was heralded as one answer to this question. When the British firm of Minton & Co debuted their new invention at the Great Exhibition of 1851 in London, the first World's Fair, Majolica quickly became their most celebrated product. Made from moldable earthenware, and decorated in a vibrant palette of lead-based glazes, Majolica unleashed a world of possibility for manufacturers and provided consumers with an exciting array of choices. From British royalty to the housekeeper on a budget, between 1851 and the First World War, Majolica mania took hold across society on both sides of the Atlantic. This uncannily lifelike peacock greets visitors to the exhibition and is one of the standout pieces. It was manufactured by Minton & Co in their Stoke-on-Trent factory at the height of Majolica mania in the 1870s. An impressive piece of sculpture, the peacock introduces some of the contradictions embodied in Majolica specifically and 19th century culture more broadly, which this exhibition aims to uncover. The peacock celebrates the beauty of the natural world, but it was manufactured through an industrial process that polluted the environment. It was inspired by the ceramics of the Renaissance, but was made using the latest glaze and kiln technology. Peacocks were a symbol of the art for art's sake philosophy of the aesthetics movement, but could also represent British imperial power over India. The bird is native to Southeast Asia and a symbol of Mughal rulers. Through the use of majolica tiles at the Royal Dairy in Windsor, the ceramic was associated with cutting edge hygiene, but the lead used to create majolica's brightly colored glazes poisoned factory workers. Majolica mania also shows how Majolica travelled from Britain to America as potters and craftspeople immigrated to the United States. Baltimore became a centre of the pottery industry in the 19th century, thanks to a variety of factors. Many of the raw materials needed to make pottery, such as clay and coal, could be sourced within the city or close by. There was also a steady source of people to hire for work in the factories, as Baltimore was second only to New York City as the busiest port of entry for European immigrants. Access to the Chesapeake Bay and railroads made it easy to transport goods to and from the city by land and sea. Indeed, Baltimore was home to some of the largest pottery factories in the United States, including Edwin Bennett Pottery Company and D.F. Haynes & Co., both which produced Majolica. Haynes' daughter Fanny had attended the School of Design at the Maryland Institute, today known as MICA. As the business grew, through his daughter, Haynes hired students to hand paint ceramics produced at the factory. Majolica represents a kaleidoscopic view of the Victorian era. Contained within the imagery of the brightly coloured earthenware are the interests, politics, humour, fashion and culture of the time. With Majolica mania, the mid-Victorian interiors of Hackerman House at 1 West Mount Vernon Place are complemented by the breathtaking scale of the largest pieces and Majolica's vibrant colours which stand out against period interiors, including wood panelling, elaborate plasterwork and chandeliers. This immersive environment creates a unique, not-to-be-missed visitor experience.